What's up everyone, Tommy from Pizarro's Pieces, back today with a new video. Um, it's New Year's Eve, the missus is at work, so I haven't really got anything planned today. Pretty quiet day, just doing a bit of washing, tidying up and stuff. So I thought I'd do a little 15, 20 minute video. I did mention in my last video that I was going to do a toy room tour video uh, to show you guys the new setup in the toy room and, and just to show my collection in general. So as far as YouTube's concerned, guys, recent when I say recently, well, this year, 2020, um, I haven't really been putting too much content out. I mean, in the last four months, I think I've only put two videos out, that one being the most recent one, which was my pickups. Before that, I hadn't put a video out since I did the Ray Harryhausen video. Now, there's several reasons to this, and I did put up, I did put up um, something on the YouTube page the other day about it there's several factors to it one is is time now youtube videos take a lot of time guys anyone who does a youtube channel knows the the editing and i'm not talking about you know a youtube channel where someone's filmed it on their phone and they've just uploaded it straight you know i've got intro outros and i do editing i do cuts and stuff like that it can take time so there's that side of it secondly is content now there's a lot of youtubers out there who are putting out two three videos a week sometimes and it's just i'm not like that i just feel that if i'm going to put something out it needs to be relevant um i don't just want to put any any old shit out basically i don't want to put crap out on my channel you know when the boot sales are on and when there's toy shows on and that there's content i can put a boot sale video out with my finds i can do, put toy hunting videos out if i go to a toy show or if I go to a toy shop, etc. With the way things are, the whole country is practically in tier four now. There's no toy shows, there's nothing open, I can't do anything at the minute. So my my channel is kind of limited to the content because I don't, you know, I don't, like I said, I don't just throw random videos out there. I don't really do reviews or anything. I don't do toy reviews. I don't do um, film reviews or anything like that. So I've kind of, I haven't been able to really put anything out there. So I did say that I would do an end of uh, uh, a video before the end of the year. I was actually going to try and do it before Christmas of the uh, of the toy room. So showing you guys, like I said, the whole new setup. Um, I've just been up there. It is a little bit dark up there on one side. Although at the minute, uh, if I show you guys, it's obviously morning. It's like, what, 11 o'clock it's not particularly nice out so but it is light so you should be able we should be okay in uh show, to show you a lot around properly with it not being too dark i do need a couple of new spotlights up there so the two spotlights that i've got in the ceiling um are getting a bit dim so i do need to change them and brighten it up a little bit but we'll go up there in a minute the reason i'm down here is because the collection actually starts here this is my living room so um a lot of got a lot of people always ask if my toy room's in the attic. It's not. This is my living room, and these stairs go up into the toy room. So it's effectively like a second reception room. It's not an attic, as you can see. Rodan and King Ghidorah are up there hanging up. It's not. It's not an attic. It's like a second reception room. So the reason I said about being in my living room is because I have do have some of my collection down here. So down here we've got. The Darkness, Legend Figure, uh, Tim Curry. I'm actually thinking of watching that today. It's been a long, long time since I watched that. And talking of Tim Curry, we've obviously got the Pennywise figure, NECA figure from the 1990 mini series, um, mini TV series. So these are like my NECA horror collection. We've got Freddy, Jason Voorhees, Michael Myers, Pennywise, as just mentioned, uh, Predator, and Mr. Arnie from Predator. Hellraiser, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Chucky, and Alien. And also around here, mixed in with all these lovely flowers, is a 1984 plastic carded Freddy Krueger glove, obviously from A Nightmare on Elm Street. So the collection effectively does start down here. That's why I wanted to show you guys, because a lot of you know that I had the horror figures, and I didn't want people thinking, oh, there's a uh, Salem. Say hello in his nice little bean bag. Sleeping. Well, not sleeping, shall I say, resting. Um, yeah, the NECA, fig the NECA horror figures are, are downstairs now. So I wanted to show you guys that. And then this is the 
This is the view from going up the stairs. You can see the Necker figures. Got some drossy Star Wars film on in the background at a minute. And then here's the toy room. So if I just turn the lights on, and let me just turn this Pink Panther lamp on here. One second. Should bring a bit more light. So look, a lot of you who have been subscribed to this channel four years now, just over four years. It was a couple of days ago that I, four years in 2016 that I put my first video up. Um, you would have probably seen a lot of this, but it's all changed. So no one's actually seen the new setup of the toy room. I've took a couple of photos here and there, but I haven't done anything in regards to videos or, and so this is all new. This will be new in regards to the setup to you guys. So I changed things around. So basically this unit here used to be here on this side, but I decided to put it in the middle because this whole middle bit was being wasted with regards to space. And I wanted to free up some space and I wanted to free up a bit of wall space as well. So here is my desk. This is where I do the editing for the YouTube videos. And if I'm playing anything on my laptop, like Championship Manager or anything, is usually up here. I've got my little He-Man stool there. Um, as you can see, the camera stroke mic stand as well. Um, I've got some bits up on the wall. I've got my little record player there as well. So play all my vinyl. And I've got, like I said, I've got some bits up on the wall. My original uh, Masters of the Universe poster. I think that was a Kellogg's promotion, if I remember rightly. Got a couple of Transformers comics framed. I just really like the covers on them. We've got the Dinobots one, and then we've got like a Soundwave one which was the Transformers and Visionaries. And then I've got my Brave Star cell there. There's my Pink Panther lamp that I picked up at the boot sale uh, last year, I believe. Um, got a Masters of the Universe poster with a comic and a couple of mini comics framed here. Like I said, guys, I didn't really have too much wall space before. Um, this is freed up a little bit, and there's some. There's actually some wall space over there as well if I want it. And then we've got the Masters of the Universe vinyl LP um framed as well got a few little monsters in my pocket here nothing oh one of them's fell down there let me just pick him up nothing um substantial it's a small collection i'm not going for any completion or i just like them nostalgically i had i had these i remember having these in the early 90s i think it was about 92 93 when they came out and i've just picked i picked up a random a jar load at a boot sale for a couple of quid a couple of years ago and I kept them that little mountain thing I think is actually for Gormitty um, Vic my pal got it for me he paid a pound for it and he just said to me he actually said to me to use it for my battle beast but it actually works better with the monsters in my pocket so I decided to go with it here here is my Blu-rays and um, DVD collection I've got to be careful here because I don't want to shake the um, relatively small because, um, I'll be honest with you guys, I don't like having too much media. Um, I only bought a Blu-ray player a year ago and m most of these, most of these are cult classics and not the sort of stuff that jump, jumps up on TV every now and again. I've got a few 4K versions here. I've got Dark Crystal, Labyrinth and Jurassic World and venom a 4k because i've actually got a 4k player obviously i've got to have all the i've got simbads the three simbads there conan the barbarian hell comes to frog town killer clowns from outer space absolutely great film that is the guy of our american wealth in london one of my favorites wolf guy which i haven't actually seen yet i think that's still sealed it is i should watch that really candy man another great film the crow a couple of uh, inception Nightmare on Elm Street box set, which I got really cheap from CEX. I think I paid a tenner for it ages ago. Lord of the Rings trilogy. Ill Manners. I don't know why that's in there. It's a random film. It's okay, but a um, couple of the monsters in my pocket falling over. And then we got some of the more Harry Has and films. Gremlins 2 as well. Clash of the Titans. Valley of Guanji. Beast from 2000 Fathoms. Uh, Jason and the Argonauts. King Kong. Some of these haven't actually been opened. And then there's other films, King Kong Escapes, uh, Goodfellas, Transformers, the animated movie, Starship Troopers, Robocop Trilogy, Predator, Return of Godzilla. We've got Big Trouble in Little China. Again, I bought this recently. I haven't actually uh, watched this. This was, I think it was two for 15. We've got the uh, Reanimator and I think it's the Reanimator's, is it just number one? I think it, I thought there was both on there, the, the Bride as well. Um, yeah, I don't like to keep, let me just shut that again. 
probably going to... They are, look. They've all tumbled. Never mind. Um, got some other just random DVDs and, and Blu-rays and some box sets in here. Um, Matrix, another Harry Hasen box set. Aliens. I've actually got the Rocky box set. Never been opened yet. Underworld, Best of the Best, Akira, Flight of Dragons, Gorgo. And then I've got some DVDs and I've got some copies as well. Like I said, this is just... Uh, it's hard guys it's fun the barbarian dungeons and dragons just critters the collection i think i've got the funders the thundercats dvds here yeah i've got yeah um let me turn this around like i said guys i don't i don't like to keep too much media so if i buy a blu-ray i watch it and i think you know what i'm never going to watch that again i do trade it in because of space um i've seen some youtube I've watched some YouTube videos recently and some people have got amazing collections of media like Blu-ray, DVDs, VHS, but they take up a lot of space. I'm a toy collector. I am predominantly a toy collector. I do have some comics. I do have a few games and I do have some media, but the media, most of it, what you just see is related to what I'm into. Um, and I don't like clogging up too much, so it's very minimal. There is a few downstairs as well. We have got a few Blu-rays downstairs as well. Let's turn this camera around. So, uh, one of the, my favourite parts of my collection, guys, you would have seen this before. These are the Fundar, the Barbarian figures. Um, I've had these a few years now. Really, really cool items. They've abs absolutely shot up in value recently. Um, I've got all four made by Toy and Amy. Um, that's the convention exclusive. Comes with a... I think this this is yeah there we go I'll turn that on it might I don't know if it's going to be any better to be honest with you um yeah that one comes with a glow in a dark sword and then you've got the three here you've got Ookla the mock princess Ariel and obviously Thunder the barbarian um anyone who's not seen the cartoon I recommend it you'd have seen the DVD box set that I just mentioned uh in my media drawers it came before He-Man there's a lot of people that didn't realise. A lot of people think this is a rip-off of He-Man. Thunder the Barbarian came out before He-Man in the very early 80s. I think it was 81. And that would have been just when the Masters of the Universe toy line came out. So, yeah, it's it's definitely recommended. If you're into, like, the 80s cartoons, sci-fi monsters, like kind of like Dungeons and Dragons, ap ap apocalyptic worlds, I definitely recommend that. Got two visionaries here. Um, Leoric, obviously the leader of the goodies, and I uh, can't think of his name now. The, the leader of the baddies, uh, Dark something, it's just gone beyond me. There's both their staffs as well, because they visionaries struggle to um, stand up a little bit. They're not the greatest. I need to probably get a couple of stands for them. Um, I've got a coffin bank here that I picked up from the boot sale. Cool 80s coffin bank. Really, really cool. Used to take the money. Um, I paid like £2.50 for that, and I decided to keep it for my collection because nostalgically and memories. Got a couple of Roger Rabbit figures here. Um, again, I bought these quite recently off Craig at Nerd Base. Um, got Roger Rabbit and the Weasel, or Smart Guys, he's got on a sticker here. I had both of these um, when I was younger, so I decided to get them again. Relatively cheap on card, so happy with that. Um, there isn't a light here, I don't think. No, there isn't. Got really cool Space Ghost figure. Love Space Ghost, the cartoon. And we got some Samurai Jack figures that I got here recently. We got Samurai Jack with the horse and Aku. And then we got a couple of Boglins here as well, mini Boglins. So it's kind of like a cartoon networky Hanna Barbera thing going on here with these toys. Not the not Roger Rabbit's, obviously Roger Roger Rabbit's not part of that. Now going down here, we've got Dungeons and Dragons. Um the Puzzle there, Wadderton's Puzzle was a recent addition. I only got that about two months ago, I believe. Um, the rest of this stuff's sort of been here. I've got a guy who's fallen down here. Let me just stand him up. Um, obviously, Tiamat the Dragon, one of my great parts of my collection. Got War Duke in the back there. We've got the um, Hook Horror. Um, we've got Strongheart and the Bronze Dragon. And then we've got some monsters in that area as well. And then we've got a fantasy figure case. So a really cool part of the collection. And Danny, he's getting a bit dark here, guys. Apologies. But we've got some Guyver figures and uh, Devil Man. I don't even think you guys can see that, to be honest with you. Um, yeah, it's really, really dark here. Hold on one sec. Let me, uh, let me get a torch.
Well, I'm back. I've got me uh, I've got me phone here. Apologies if um, the lighting. I'm just having a look now. Yeah, I don't think the lighting was particularly great. Uh, we've got some Devil Man and Guyver figures here that have been in my collection quite a while. Most of these came from America. Bits and pieces. A couple of Sinbad comics there that I bought recently. Some Venom bits. Nice Masters of the Universe poster. Now there is lights here, but let me uh, turn my torch off. Yeah, it should be it should be enough. Um, so yeah, here's the Venom collection. That's become a hell of a lot smaller than it was. It used to take up a whole cabinet. Um, I opted against that and really made it a lot smaller. That's a recent figure, Toxin. Um, that's the new figure from the movie, The Legend. But apart from that, oh, and there's the new Carnage as well. Apart from that, most of these were here originally from the collection. There's the Blu-ray Walmart exclusive box set that came with a figure. So that's it for Venom. It's literally just two shelves now. It used to be like four or five shelves of Venom and Carnage. I really brung the collection down on that side. Here's the V stuff. Some really, really cool bits. I just got one more comic to get to complete the DCV run. I think my friend in America's got it for me now, Enrique. The four VHS box set I picked up at the boot sale in the last year or so. Some other bits and pieces that came from Spain. So yeah, very cool collection. And then we've got the random shelf that's got some Swamp Thing figures. If you guys remember, I used to have nearly a near complete Swamp Thing collection. I decided to sell most of them and keep just these three. Um, we've got a Van Helsing 12 inch figure there, we've got Toxie on card there, very cool figure. And then this is a recent addition from I bought someone off of um, Instagram. I had these as a youngster, Hero Gladiators from Bluebird. Just a cool card, not particularly a great line. Um, I can't really remember how it does, you have to battle somehow, I can't really remember. But um, I got that re relatively cheap. Uh, we've got my Street Fighter shelf, again, that's become quite small. I did have quite a lot more than that. Um, I sold a lot of my collection on the Street Fighter, but I decided to keep this little handful of figures, um, original game, CD, VHS, and some other bits and pieces. Uh, up here, has this light run out? Oh no, it's not, there we go. Um, my Karate Kid shelf, we've got Mr. Miyagi, Daniel San, and uh, Johnny Lawrence, I've got the signed figure there as well, and Cobra Kai. Um, season 3 starts on Saturday, or is on Saturday, so I'm really looking forward to that. That's going to be a binge binge job. Got me neck of turtles here. Um, let's check the phone of brightness. Yep. Yeah. I'm really pleased with this. Maybe a couple more. I did buy a Metalhead. Um, I'll be honest with you guys. One sec, it's here. It was a bit of an impulse buy, um, I, but I don't really like it. I'm not really... I've got no... Like with regards to these guys here, there's some attachment there. I really liked Teenage Turtles when I was growing up um, in the very late 80s and early 90s. Uh, but this guy, I'm just not really that fussed about. Um, I bought him because he was cheap. And then I've looked and I thought, you know what? I've decided that I don't think I'm going to keep him. So um, I've opted to... Uh, I'm just going to leave him there for a minute and I'll probably sell him. But very cool figures there. I'll probably have to get Splinter, April O'Neil as well at some point. But no rush for them. Uh, we've got the four movie turtles here on the next shelf up. Um, like I said, apologies for the lighting, guys. I'm trying to use my phone as well at the same time. Uh, up here, we've got the Necker, Ed 209, Robocop. And then that's actually the McFarlane one. Does this light come on as well? Yeah. That's actually the McFarlane one. McFarlane Robocop. I've had that for probably 15 years now, I reckon. Got a couple of um, reaction Robocop figures in the back as well on the card. Two versions, the normal and the damaged. My Terminator shelf. The original Terminator. We've got a couple of, uh, we've got a Kenner figure carded in the back and then a couple of Kenner loose figures as well. I've got the signed um, T-1000 from uh, bloody hell. <laughs> it's really, I can't think of his name now, Patrick. Yeah, you know what? My brain's gone to mush today, guys. Um, and then we've got Arnie and uh, John O'Connor as well, the Necker figures. So, yeah, pretty cool. Now, this is where it gets really bright and colourful. Um, 
my Jurassic Park collection. So it it started with this particular one and the um, Dilophosaurus electric version, which is on the other side there. So yeah, this all sort of escalated pretty quick. So uh, I got a complete Jurassic Park compound now in the box, and we got the Raptor here and the Dilophosaurus there. We got the box Triceratops up there. We got the box T Rex and we've got the rest of them here. The only one I'm missing is uh, the Stegosaurus. I need to get the Stegosaurus. I've got all the figures, loose, complete. Um, I'm not overly fussed about having them carded unless I can get them cheap. And I literally need the Stegosaurus and if I can get the two vehicles for a reasonable price, I will. Otherwise, I'm not overly fussed about them. Uh, here's my two Transformers shelves. Um, there's the great sound wave at the back there that came from the boot sale a couple of years ago. Or was it a couple of years ago? Yeah, I think it was now. Nah. Or it was. A lot, I think it was April 2019, so last year. Um, yeah, nothing's really changed here. No real, no new additions. Same to the bottom shelf here. Just got the Dino Bots there and a couple of other random bootleg robots and Zoids and stuff, and another sound wave. So nothing's really changed there. Coming around to Masters Universe now. Let Masters Universe is, um, let me just turn this off one second. Let me turn this around. The Masters Universe collection is probably one that's had the most dramatic change because um, although I did pull out a few Venom figures, there wasn't anything. I kept all the best Venom figures. There wasn't anything really of massive value. Um, I just had too many Venom and Carnage action figures, so I really minimised that made it a lot smaller with regards to the he-man um i have sold a few high-end pieces so um i don't it's hard to explain but i kind of was looking at the masters of the universe collection and i was thinking to myself do like i haven't really added to it in the last two years it's been really hard masters of the universe prices have gone through the roof and some people are going to be like why why did you do this but i did sell some of my collection um, and I've got really a lot of money, guys, like, it, you know, silly money. I mean, I'm talking about some of these things I paid £5 for and I was getting £70, £80 for them, these items. Um, I sold a few unusual pieces. I sold two rolls of uh, wallpaper, Masters of the Universe wallpaper to someone in America. I did sell my laser power, my laser power He-Man as well. Um, again, I've for what I paid for him, I ended up getting three times the amount back. And then I've sold a few other little bits and pieces like some pencils and pencil case. But, you know, guys, like I said, for what I paid for them several years ago to what I was getting for them. And there's no real super attachment. There. Don't get me wrong. The He-Man collection is still big. There's still a lot here. But I think I sold about a thousand pounds worth of He-Man bits. Um, probably about November, I think it was. So it, you might not notice anything missing. I'm just telling you that this was a massive section before and it's come right down. And also, um, I've flattened a lot of things. I used to have a lot of books on display, other bits and pieces. I've flattened them all to make more space for other toys in the future. So we got um, my kind of like my Hordak shelf, I suppose. We've got Super 7 Hordak there. We've got Hurricane Hordak. We've got a sealed slime from the slime pit. We've got the slime pit book as well. And then we've got a comic, a Marvel comic in the back there. Coming down here, some more of the Horde. Got Leech, Mantena, Grizzlaw. Another uh, the normal Hordak, Multibot, um, Hall Trooper, and then obviously Shadow Weaver, which she's obviously from the new vintage line, not the vintage collection, not from the original because I didn't make a toy of her. Uh, got my commemorative DVD collection to celebrate 30 years. And some more. You can see a trend here, guys. You can probably tell that Hordak's my favourite character. <laughs> uh, we've got a couple more Hordak classics and the one in the back there on the card. A couple of Skeletors as well in... The uh, filmation and then the um, Japanese box there, and then we've got the man himself, He Man. And there's my miniature Brave Star collection, 3030. Brave Star, Tex Hex. Got Brave Star Money Bank in the back there. We've got a bowl, um, a couple of bubble bath bottles, an annual. And then down here, we've got all the He Man books and comics. Like I said, I'm, I'll try to make it minimal. Uh, there's a gym bag there as well. Going around here to the side. All the He-Man board games and puzzles and all that I decided to box up here. Um, we've got the skates, 
the Viewmaster, the toothbrush holder. We've got the tray at the back there. We've got the Viewmaster um, reels. You can hear my washing machine is finished in the background. Uh, going up, got a couple of lunch boxes. Got the brass battle cat. Got a couple of money banks. We've got the um, them at the back that you can hang up. A couple of packs of pencils. Just bits and pieces, odds and sods. Up here, some of my favourite bits. We've got the watches. Uh, the radios, the cassette packs, one from Miracle over there, and then we've got the UK one from Ladybird. We've got an alarm clock there. Uh, we've got a camera there as well. Um, a bit more darker up here. That's really cool. That's one of my more recent acquisitions. That's the Gumball Bank. I paid quite a lot of money for that as well. Um, Battle Cat, He Man, Panther, Skeletor. Got some slippers here, <laughs> some glasses. Just random bits and pieces, but some really cool high value items. A uh, He Man bot bag. Got a sealed shield there, an open shield. There's actually another shield that's fallen down the back. He Man's one. Got a record tote box, and then we got a take along um, player, cassette player there. Got a bag there as well. Uh, moving on, I'm not going to go into too much detail on this one, guys. Um, I'll put a link above with regards to Gremlins because. I've done a video already on Gremlins. I've also done a video on the animated Spider-Man collection that you can see over there. Um, so I'm just going to look like that. If you want to look at the Gremlins collection in detail, like I said, I would have put a link above the top and you can have a have a look at that. Now I'm going to come back around here. So this is the new shelf. This, um, I'll also put a link to the... Toy Biz Spider-Man collection, you'll see that. That's actually a recent acquisition, the Spider-Man game. Um, we've also got a couple of sealed, not sealed, but complete monster in my pocket. 24 packs. So this is this shelf here, um, this shelving unit here is like the Kaiju miscellaneous, a little bit miscellaneous shelf. Um, predominantly dominated by Godzilla, Kong, um, Pacific Rim, Ultraman, and Bootleg Monsters. So, going across the top here, you can see there's some some of the Bootleg Godzillas. Um, these are also Bootleg the Bootleg Gigans, and then we've got some legitimate Trendmaster Godzilla figures. We've got some Kong figures down here. And it's also where I've decided to keep my books my collection of books and I've also got some VHS along here as well. So yeah, just some random figures here. Got Ultraman figures, we've got a, a Spawn figure, we've got a King Shark figure, we've got some more bootleg Kaiju figures here. Uh, up here we've got legit figures from the Godzilla line. We've got Gigan, uh, Space Godzilla, Anguirus, got a couple of Pacific Rim Kaiju, I think that one's called Knife Head, here's some more. I really, really like the Pacific Rim figures. Um, I liked it. I like the NECA ones, and then Bandai brought them out, and they're just not as good. The NECA ones are a hell of a lot better. Got some more Ultraman monsters down here, some with tags, some with that. Again, here's some more. That one there's Bandai. Um, yeah, I'm just, I just wasn't a fan. I've got them. I don't mind having them in my collection, but I just think the, the NECA ones were a lot better. Like I said, some more random monsters and that down here a couple of japanese carded figures that i got from nema studios nick at nema uh some godzilla um necker figures and some just normal monster figures got biolante there great character got um baragon mothra just loads of just monsters you gotta love the kaiju plenty of different godzillas here as well i think i missed that shelf around the side actually one sec let me uh Go back here. There's loads of NECA Godzillas here. Um, and then there's that statue I got made. Half Godzilla, half Mecha Godzilla. Very, very heavy, very cool um, addition. And we got some more. Not all, some are NECA, some are just um, vinyl figures from Bandai and that. And then we'll come back around here, like I said. More random monsters. Um, some spawn figures there, random again, just I like them sort of characters. We've got some boxed Godzilla bits from Japan, um, and we've got some 
Trend Masters Toho stuff as well. Got some more bootlegs up here. And then some more Neckar and some more Trend Masters figures. Um, and then kind of like the bottom is kind of used for a little bit of a... There's a box underneath there that's got loads of stuff in it, including Godzilla DVDs. Um, there's my signed Billy picture, my signed uh, Zach Gallagher picture. Got some Gremlins bits here and some horror figures. That's a recent addition you would have seen in the video. It actually come off the card. I have re-glued it. Um, I'm not... I'm not really um I'm not really a fan of pinning action figures up like this. I used to do it years ago, but then you end up there's a several reasons. One is you end up leaving pinholes all across your room, which is one of the reasons I don't particularly like doing it either. But as well, I don't know, it's like the, the cards can get a bit dodgy in the sun and everything. I'm not a particular fan. These are actually the only carded figures I've got hanging on the wall. Um just because there was a little space there and I thought they'd look quite cool. They look okay. I'm I'm pretty happy with that. Moving around here, we've got my Mad Balls and Supernaturals. Um, I just need one more Mad Ball Hornhead to complete the collection of Mad Balls. That was a pretty quick collecting thing as well that uh, happened in 2020. Pretty pleased with them. My Rocky collection. Um, I have got... Got Mike Tyson there. I have got the uh, Mego Rocky figure on order. That will be coming uh, in the next week or so. That's actually the only thing I've currently got on order. I've been really quiet the last couple of months on buying. Here's some. This this is where some space is, guys. So I'm going to be obviously using this space to fill up with, uh, with more toys. There's the Scorpion, McFarlane Scorpion I got recently. Uh, Marty McFly from Back to the Future. I've got Rambo there, some Dark Crystal and the Goblin King from Labyrinth. Uh, but it's my Battle Beast collection, obviously, and um, Trash Bag Bunch, uh, both complete. The only thing is, is I need weapons for quite a few Battle Beasts. I think there's about 30 or so. You can see like all the front ones have all got weapons here. Um, but then as you go towards the back, they're all, I think there's about 35 I need weapons for. All season one, series one, have got weapons. Um, most of series two have. It's series three where it becomes a problem. But I have got a complete collection. And they have all got their holograms as well, which is cool. I've got the um, sword, the bootleg sword, actually. That's the Imperial one. And obviously a nice lunchbox and flask and uh, a framed advert from a comic. Uh, that's my missus's collection. Some Minnie Mouse, Mickey Mouse, and Nightmare Before Christmas figures. She did have a Snoopy collection up here, but she kind of lost interest in it and said, uh, just bring it down, get rid of it. So, more space for me. Uh, it's one of the best parts of my collection, guys, the Harry Housen collection. Um, let me try and get some light on it. There's Carly. I've got some VHS, a Clash of the Titans lunchbox. There's the great Talos, and I had that made as well, that figure. Uh, that bust, shall I say, had made. Sorry about the shadow, guys. Um, yeah, here's all the figures. They're actually Storm Collectible Golden Axe figures, but very cool and look very good in the Harry Harrison collection. There's a nice Clash of the Titans pin button there that I got. Um, the Cyclops I got made from the same guy who did Talos and the Mecha Godzilla and Godzilla bust as well. Uh, he's on Instagram, Andy Cope, I think his name is. Really, really good. I, I was actually a Freddy one I want to get off of him as well, but um, I haven't pulled the trigger on that yet. I'll probably get that in the new year. Um, got some Clash of the Titans figures and a couple of um, Ymir's and just random collectible bits and pieces. And uh, last but not least, the WWF, WWE collection. Uh, got a nice talking Hogan. Um some vintage bits here, a uh, money bag and some open stickers. I've actually got a full collection of stickers in my folder, some in one of my folders, a cup, a cassette, um, microphone, and got the NWO belt at the back there. And then we've got all the figures. Now, I am uh, adding to this, so I'm going to have to try and make some space. I've got a load on pre-order that are due in the next month or so, the British Bulldog. Um, I've got the... Paul Ellery Builder Figure Series, which comes with a new Goldberg, Edge, China, 
and Shawn Michaels. So I'm going to have to make some space because this is crammed, as you guys can see. Um, some really, really cool ones there. Like I said, guys, sorry about the lighting. I'm just, it's not the greatest. A couple of Ghostbusters figures. I only decided to keep these two from the new series. My signed American Werewolf in London uh, video disc. Signed by David Norton. Very, very, very nice. Uh, here's the Gremlins as well, guys. Some older Necker Gremlins are along here. But again, if you want to go into any detail on them or these, the animated Spider-Man, um, I did put the links to the videos up. So you can watch it through there. So yeah, guys, that's the... That's the room tour. Um, I'm really pleased with the the way my collection's going. Let me turn these lights off because, uh, unfortunately, I uh, I've done these on on batteries, and what happens is sometimes is one of them may forget to turn off, and then they hold on, got me a little remote here. Let's turn these off, and then what happens is is they die. The batteries die. Um, there's another one here. Let's just turn these off. That happy days. Yep. Really, what I should do is do what I did with the Gremlins cabinet and get LED strips. The problem is, is that the amount here that I've got running wires and cables and everything, it's 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 hard work. Saying that, changing batteries for however many lights. There's three in each light. So one, two, yeah. There's like thirty lights or something in there. But anyway, oh, here's a new acquisition. I forgot to mention, guys. Pick, uh, got this off of uh, Vic, my mate, picked this up for me in Smith's um, Space Godzilla. They've got the they've got Gigan Destroyer and Godzilla 2016 as well. I'd like to get the Destroyer, but there was only one left, and Vic one Vic picked him up for himself, which is fine. I'll probably get it at a later date. Um, so yeah, guys, I'm really pleased with the way my room is at the minute. Now, with regards to collecting um, and 2021. Now, 2020 has been an awful year for many people, um, including myself. It's not been a particularly good year. Um, I just, I'm just happy that I've still got a job. Um, I'm still able to pay the bills, etc. There's a lot of people out there who've lost their jobs. It's not, it's not been a good time for a lot of people. In regards to collecting, 2020 has not been a particularly um, great year. I mean, I haven't bought tons i've bought a bit but it seems as the years go on i seem to be buying less and less and there's several reasons for this when you if you start collecting i mean i've been collecting many years but in recent years obviously as i've progressed in career and everything you you get more money which means you buy more stuff um and as the as the years have gone on so 2015 2016 i've acquired more and more stuff that i wanted and I've kind of got to a point where I'm not really sure what I want to collect. And I said this last year, wasn't really sure what I wanted to collect. And, you know, I decided I wanted to get the Mad Balls, the, the Head Poppers. Not not a particularly hard line to collect. Yeah, I do need one left. Jurassic Park, like, that was purely a nostalgic thing. And what triggered that was is that um, I picked up the two dinos, from no, the three dinosaurs, sorry, from the boot sale. I picked three up, carded from the boot sale, pay 15 quid each. And I thought, you know what? This is the time for me to to go back to Jurassic Park, something that I had in 93 as a child. Um, I absolutely loved it and I had all of them and I decided to, but it was a relatively quick, easy to get collection. Yeah, I haven't got the Stegosaurus box, but the hunt will go on for that. I don't really know what I want to collect at the minute. Um, so much has happened this year. I think collecting's kind of took, I wouldn't say it took a back step, but you realise that, it's important like to keep to try and keep me sane and, and there's probably a lot of you collectors out there who are probably thinking the same like but I don't really know where I'll go next what I want to do um, I'm going to carry on pushing Pizarro's pieces as a business I still want to sell obviously when the toy shows come back I've got tons of stock in the lock up that's that's going to be a, a priority for me in the coming months but I'll be honest with you guys a big thing for me this year is I want to I want to go I want to go back to the States um i obviously missed that in 2020 twice um you know you guys know i love chicago i love going to visit enrique i I go with ken my friend ken we normally go twice um and yeah i've missed it i've missed going away guys that's a big thing for me 
you know, you work hard, you like to go away, you enjoy yourself and there's no, until you've done it, yeah, as a toy collector and toy hunter, etc., there's nothing that beats the States. I'm sorry, yeah, for the amount of stuff they've got over there, you can't beat it. The NEC and Sandan toy shows are good toy shows and we've got a couple of decent shops in this country, but it's nothing compared to, to over there. It, obviously, America's a massive country. When you go there, it's, it's, it's different. It's not the same. And, and some of you guys watching this would have been there um, and done hunts in certain parts like, you know, Florida and Vegas and places like that. They haven't really got the toy shops or the shows or the flea markets. Chicago has got, I think, probably at least 10 vintage toy shops. There is actually two, I think, have opened since I went. We I haven't been since October last year now. I think two have opened. Um since then because obviously got close friend Enrique over there and he always sends videos and updates and there's a couple there's one that looks really really good I can't remember the name of it but it's like so many and that's just Chicago that's just Chicago and I love Chicago Chicago is a great city and I just love going there for a short trip whether it's five days or six days you know you don't need to go there for two weeks it ain't one of them sort of holidays and that's what I miss. That's what I want to do. I, I want to go over there. I want to do the do the toy hunting over there because when I'm over there, it, it sparks me to think, oh, like you see something and it sparks you. It's like the Clash of the Titan figures when I was over there. That's what sparked me to, to start collecting them. I'm never going to probably be able to afford a Kraken, a Mattel Kraken, and I haven't got Pegasus either. But it, when you're over there, you see things that you don't really see in the UK. You know, like lots and lots of toys you don't really see over it. And like I said, you it's hard to understand until you've been there and done it. Um, it's hard. But there's not really anything I really want at the minute. There's a few NECA figures that are going to be coming out over the next 12 months. There's Gremlins are still releasing some, so I'm going to get them. Um, I know Enrique's got, a, in a Chicago, he's bought a um, the new Gremlin. I think it was the Back to School Gremlin. It was a Target exclusive or Walmart exclusive. It weren't released here. He's got that for me. So I'm I'm on top of that. Because, you know, the Gremlins, I have to make sure I have. I can't not have a complete collection of them. Um, in fact, I haven't got the latest one, which is the um, the Santa one, the Santa stripe that comes with a little gizmo. Craig has got it at Nerd Base for me, but obviously everything's been shut. Um, I could say to Craig, post it to me, but I like to visit and pick up several bits when I'm there. But who knows when everything's going to reopen at the minute. Um I, f I think in the UK, we could be looking at this for at least two months. We could be looking at another, we could be looking at a shit January and February. Not that January and February are great months anyway, because no one really does anything. But for all them small businesses out there, I just I feel really sorry for people at the minute. It's not good. It is really not good. But I want to try and leave 2020 on a high and try and be positive. Um, I also wish, I forgot to mention, I don't think I mentioned it at the beginning of the video, guys. I hope everyone had a good Christmas. I did forget that as well. And obviously, I want to wish everyone a happy new year. Now, subscribers, new, old, and if you're watching this video and you ain't subscribed, please consider to do so. Um, I will I will try and put content out, guys. But like I say, I'm not one of them guys who's two videos a week. I just can't do it. Physically, I can't do it because of time restraints. And... I just don't have the content to do it. Um, like I said, there's a lot of YouTubers out there who, and I'm not dissing anyone or anything, but there's there's some co content out there. It's just what to try, for people to try and get subscribers and that. People are just throwing out videos willy nilly, and some of the content's just not good. Like I don't watch I don't watch a lot of YouTube. I used to. I really don't know more. Um, I just watch odds and sods here and there. I've not been watching anything recently, even the usual guys in the UK like. Uh, Empire Toys and people like that, Bugsy's Toy Box. I haven't seen a lot of stuff recently. I've, I usually keep on top of all these channels, but I've just been away from YouTube, watching it and um, and doing the videos as well. So yeah, guys, I hope you hope you enjoyed this video. I'm going on a little bit. I want to cut it now. It's been quite long. Um, yeah, subscribe, like, share, all that stuff. Click the bell and all that, what everyone, what everyone, everyone else says. And uh, I'll try and do, you know, uh, another video in the coming month or so. Um, but I hope you've enjoyed the, the little tour of my room and little tour of my living room as well. 
and and for them for people to understand where this toy room is because like i said a lot of people commented because of the shape of it everyone thinks it's an attic it's not an attic um i've actually got this great like i say i turn my camera around for my toy room and i've got this lovely view of my of my lovely living room with uh star wars on in the background at the minute but yeah i'm gonna i think i'm gonna watch legend that's gonna be today's film before i get dinner sorted in a couple of hours um so yeah guys listen let's hope 2021 is better for so many people um love you all and thanks for always uh for all the support um the many of you have been there from day one like four years ago since i started the youtube and before that when pizarro's pieces is nearly six years old now 2015 i started pizarro's pieces um but yeah you're all great and i can't wait to see everyone back at the toy shows and that is um it's not been very good. It's it's quite depressing. So we have to try and keep keep our heads above water as such. Um, but yeah, love you guys, and I'll see you all soon.